Good morning. Oh yeah, let's get this day started. I don't know what the plan is. Uh, I'm just gonna drive around and see what cool things I can find, I guess. I got two more days counting today in Mount St. Helens. So I found just a pull off in the side of the road. You know, a nice fire pit and everything. I can't have a fire because there are fire restrictions right now. Which is a freaking bummer because with how cold it is, fire would be so great. Find somewhere to set up uh, my breakfast station so I can start cooking some bacon and eggs and maybe even hash browns. Oh, I got the whole workstation going here, so I decided to get some hash browns on. Making my bacon. Oh man, it's gonna be a good breakfast. I haven't had a breakfast like this for so long. Oh, there we go, the eggs are done. Just toasting up some bread here. Hash browns are still cooking. Oh, this is looking promising. My wooded breakfast, oh yeah, I already ate one egg. So freaking good. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and finish this. I'll have a lot of cleanup after it, but it'll be so worth it. All right, I'm in my Jeep, just got done cleaning up after that amazing breakfast. Just checking out a map here to see what I'm gonna do next. So far, I went to Ape Cave right here. And yesterday, I came in here into Lava Canyon. I stayed right up here at the trailhead. Now I'm somewhere just, just south of Lava Canyon. I think my plan today is to travel down this road come around here and go up this road. I haven't gotten a good view of uh, Mount St. Helens yet. So I want to do that. And then I see there's another road that comes up here and there's a lot of different stuff up here. Uh, Cascade Peak, Independent Pass, you know, just a lot of different places. So I'm gonna hit up this road as well. We're getting somewhat of a view of Mount St. Helens here. So I just pulled off to the side of the road uh, as a good viewpoint of Mount St. Helens and stuff. And as I was looking at a sign, uh, these great people pulled up as well. Uh, I talked to Sierra a little bit and she was telling me about what's up ahead of the road and tell me about their trip. And uh, and then she told me to come and meet uh, this gentleman named Colin over here. Colin designed all the ships for the Star Wars movie. He's the original concept artist for the Death Star, the X-Wing, the TIE Fighter, the Millennium Falcon, all of the ships. and. Then he worked on multiple other movies, including 2001 Space Odyssey, War Games, if you've ever seen War Games before. And he sat behind Walter Cronkite as the HAL 9000 computer, quote unquote, um, on the first moon landing. So Hal, uh, Colin was telling Walter Cronkite what to say on television. So we're taking a tour of comic book stores here in the Pacific Northwest and hitting a few of the national parks and monuments and having fun and making money. <laughs> that is so cool. And uh, if you guys wanted to check out Colin's stuff, uh, ColinCantwell.com. And you can check out, I'm sure, tons of his uh, drawings of what you just mentioned and yeah. uh, uh, some different Con works as concept well. Art, yeah, the concept drawings that he made for George Lucas before the first film was started. Wow. Yeah. That is so cool. Well, it was so, so awesome it to meet you, Colin. It was great meeting you too. Michael. Yeah, thank you so much. It's so cool, the people that you meet on the road just from starting a conversation. So if you can see out there in the distance, that's Mount St. Helens. You can see all this landscape right here. This was all affected by the 1981 eruption of Mount St. Helens. Crazy that you can still see the impact that that eruption made, you know, what, almost 40 years ago. You can really see the crater now. I'm parked in Windy Ridge parking lot. If you look at pictures of Mount St. Helens before the explosion, before 1981, it pretty much went straight up and went to like a pretty good point actually. So if you look at what we're left with right now, think of all the rock and all the sediment and everything that was displaced that used to be sitting up there and that when the explosion and eruption happened was just displaced um, around all this landscape right here. Pretty incredible to think about. I'm not feeling a hike or anything around here right now. It's just too cold. Super cold, like this sweatshirt's not enough right now. Um, my Minnesota skin is wearing off. I'm at Meadow Lake. All the parking lots are empty. It's totally empty in this place. I was reading on the brochure that it's about 500,000 visitors a year, which I've been to parks lately that it's two, th two million, four million visitors a year. So yeah, it's definitely a lot more calm in this park, which I like. Oh man, blueberries for days. I just turned a corner and blueberries all over. Well, I made it to the lake. It's a really pretty lake. 
Once I get back to the Jeep, I'm gonna grab a Ziploc and come out here and collect a bunch of blueberries. There are tons of blueberries, some huckleberries as well. Water looks like it's pretty high. So apparently the eruption of Mount St. Helens happened in the winter of 1980. Since the eruption happened in the winter, uh, most of this area was covered in like eight feet of snow. Life and stuff were hibernating under the snow, under the ice. But had the eruption happened in the summer, it would have wiped out most of the life in this area. Kind of cool how nature times everything. Bam! Ziploc time! Blueberry time! Gonna fill this bag! Possibly another! Oh. My. Goodness. Look at all the blueberries I got so far. Yeah! Tons of them. All. Over. Sitting here in my Jeep eating my chili. So freaking good on cold days like this. I pretty much can't eat chili without crackers anymore. Mmm, look at that. I got corn, potatoes, beans, jalapenos, onions, peppers, garlic, mushrooms, celery, carrots, hamburger, Worcester sauce, tons of stuff in this chili. It's all good. In April of 1980, five days after the first earthquake started happening on the mountain, uh, the state of Washington declared this area red zone, as in no one is allowed in this area, and this area blue zone, as in you need to have a permit to even enter this area. The people who own this car here uh, came out May 15th, 1980, Donald and Natalie Parker with her nephew Rick. Um, this is a 1972 Grand Prix, it looks like, and they did get a permit to enter the blue zone. On May 18th, 1980, that's when Mount St. Helens erupted, and apparently it was 300 mile per hour uh, blast with, with gas and rock and ash. Wow. Crazy. Man, look at this. Okay, so it's nice blue skies over here, and over here, just nothing but fog and rainy clouds all coming down like super low. You gotta take water where you can on the road here. Especially well water. Love well water. This is a good find, good score. Well, I'm just winding the night down. It started raining and getting pretty cold. I just am um, camping in that parking lot that I got water from earlier. I'm just laying in my Jeep watching Dumb and Dumber. Relaxation time. I don't know if you guys have seen the space that I got in here, but pretty roomy for just me. Tell me 